Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the physics things that can that you can do within Blender 2.8. Uh, one of which, actually, the one for this video is going to be on rigid bodies, which essentially just means a hard um, object, like not soft, meaning as in like water or something that would melt or be gooey. I guess things that things that won't change shape when they hit. So yeah, that's a little bit of what we're going to be doing. This is a, a little bit of, this is a quick animation of something that you could do after you're done. <clears throat> Sweet. So let's go ahead and get started. Just make a new Blender file and delete this cube because we're going to use a sphere. I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Uh, we're just going to use a sphere because it's round and it'll roll, but this will work with any object you actually create within Blender. And then I'm going to make a plane underneath it. Uh, if you don't know shortcut keys that I've just used, it's Shift A for add, and then I just hit mesh, and then these for each one of these. And I just moved it, moved this by hitting G, and then middle mouse click, and I locked it to the, I held down the click, and then moved it up so you can go on the axis. <clears throat> you could also just hit Z. Oops. Uh, anyway, yeah, so now you can click on this, and I just hit S for scale, and then I just moved it up as big as I wanted to. Uh, sweet. So let's start by setting up the ball. If you look at this one down here, this looks like a little ball and then something circling around it. Uh, yeah, just go ahead and click on that, and click on rigid body, because that's what, what we're going to be doing. This is the physics operation that we're doing for a hard object. <clears throat> Now you can see there's a few other settings on here. Let's leave them be for just a quick second and click on the plane and click on rigid body as well. Now if we just hit the space bar, they both fall. So let's change something for this plane so that it will be um, stationary. All you have to do is hit type passive and if you hit play, your ball now interacts with it, which is perfect. That's what we want. Um, things aren't doing anything, like it'll hit here and it just kind of stops. Uh, to fix that, maybe let's add some bounciness. So we can just hit on surface response of the ground. I'm going to turn this all the way up to 1. And this will just make it fully reactive to anything bouncy. Uh, but if we hit play, nothing still happens. And it's because the ball itself is not bouncy. Now if we turn this, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're on the ball now. Uh, same place. If we just turn this all the way to 1, this is going to be extremely bouncy. And maybe we don't want a ball that is like a bouncy ball. That would be similar to a bouncy ball. Uh, but maybe like this would be similar to maybe a soccer ball or a basketball or something. So I'm going to put it at 0.5 for the ball and 1 for the plane on the ground. Uh, hopefully this is making a little bit of sense so far. <clears throat> Sweet. So now uh, let's make it a little bit more interesting than just that. I'm going to hit the right view by hitting the 3 on the numpad and hit Shift D for duplicate. This will allow me to move it around. I'm going to right click and that is going to put it in the same spot as the other plane. So now we have two planes and they're both in the same spot. Now let's go back into the right plane, or right side by hitting the 3 on the numpad and hit R on your keyboard and 90. Uh, actually we don't want necessarily 90, let's just hit R and just position it on an angle somewhere over here. I'm going to hit click on there on the ball and hit G, middle mouse click or hit X, Y or Z to move it. So I'm going to hit Y, move it over here and then hit G, Z to go up. Now because we just duplicated this, the same physics rigid body is on this one as well. So we don't really have to mess with it. Uh, so if we can just hit play, and it will play, which is exactly what we want. Uh, just some other quick tips as we go through this. Uh, you can actually click on like animated. That's for if you have it animated down here. It just makes it so that the physics cooperates a little bit easier with that. Uh, but this is probably one of the biggest 
differences that you may want to change depending on your object. If you have a box, you can just click on box and Blender will be able to calculate it faster. But as a default, it's on convex hull, which essentially just creates physics from one point. Let's maybe zoom up on our sphere here and then go into wireframe. Yes. Okay, so you can see that there's points all the way around here. Convex hull will create a physics a, a physics um, object around each one of these points, which is actually kind of resource heavy but really accurate. Oh, it's one of the most accurate ones we have here. So um, mesh being probably high, more highly accurate. But other than that, if you can find one that fits your object better, you should do it. It will be faster and it will be um, more accurate. Uh, but convex hull will do just fine and obviously you can see right here it reacts just great. We don't have to worry about it and by default if you don't know what you're doing I would just leave it at convex hull. Um, if you have some issues with convex hull then you can just try mesh. That's, those would be the two that I try first. Um, but yeah that's just my personal opinion. You can try all of them. Sweet, I hope that you've learned something from this video, and I hope to see you again in another video. Thank you. Bye-bye.